No hablo. Ni palabra. Mira. Vea los letras. No. You can't see the letters, can you? Can't see them. Watch. When your life spins out of control, can't see the letters. Look, can't read the letters. Our lives are spent trying to bring these areas under subjection so we don't focus on perceptions and desires our opinions and our emotions and our bodily wants over and above Yahweh's Ruach and Yahweh's leading. Instead, we should reflect on our master Yahshua, Hakol, the All. Such holiness is not easy. Such separation is not easy. It takes daily work, daily growth, daily commitment to ascend to be completely echad with Yahweh. As Yeshua spoke about in Yohanan 15. Can I hear a good amen? amen. So in other words, why, why can't you see these? Why are these things always falling. Look, the body makes no distinguishing mark in the world. The emotions make no distinguishing mark in the world. The human reasoning makes no distinguish. It can't be distinguished. But when it stops, you do see hakol. I'm preaching good today. Oh yeah. Yes, you are. You see the whole dreidel. You can't see the letters, but you can see the whole dreidel. And you can see the one who heads Hakol. This is Yahweh. This is Yeshua. He died on the stake, didn't he? He died on the tree, didn't he? And he is in charge of Hakol. So you can always see Yeshua. Watch this. Running and controlling your life. Because you're his slave. You're his servant. You're not a servant of the body. You're not a servant of the emotions. You're not a servant of your human reasoning. You are... Fully and completely and totally what? His. Mm. And when your life spins and you, it seems like all is lost, all is confusing, you're out of control. Watch this. You see Yahweh in control of your life. All right. Hallelujah. That, that, that vertical, I hope I got it right, Rifki. Vertical, up and down. Yeah. That vertical pole on which Yeshua died. He didn't, didn't hide on a Jehovah Witness cross or a Catholic cross. He died on a stake. Wait. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, yes. When you give him hakol, when the parts of your life that want to take over and want to call the shots are not allowed to call the shots, but the Ruach HaKodesh is allowed to call the shots and the Blessed Devar Yahweh is allowed to call the shots, you have now subjected hakol to Yahweh. This is good. You're going to get the tape today. Matter of fact, if you don't behave, I may charge you 30. Right Make that 35. Oh. <laughs> yes, all our lives are like a dreidel spinning out of control. Yours too, brother. But that's the whole point. We're supposed to lose those slave masters and recognize it is Yeshua who stirs the drink. Speak to me, O dreidel. Speak to me. The dreidel abides where? In the home, like his word, hakol, everything abides where? At home, in our heart. We don't, you don't see people in the street on the on playing dreidel. You don't see people in a, uh, in a coal mine playing. Where is the dreidel? Where do we play dreidel? We play dreidel in the home. The dreidel abides in the home, the heart, just like his word. Now the letters of the dreidel numerically spell a certain word as well. In Hebrew, each letter is given a numerical meaning. For example, Aleph, the first letter of the alphabet is the number what? One. One. Bay, the second letter of the alphabet is, is what number? Two. Two. Gimel, the third letter of the alphabet is what number? Three. Three. So in, in Hebrew, every letter has a, num a, a corresponding numerical value. We call that gematria. You can always tell an Ephraimite. An Ephraimite will say, Gematria. I believe in Gematria. <laughs> I knew right away I'm talking to an Ephraimite. No, you lie. You know, I'm, but when you hear somebody say gematria, I know I'm talking to a Jewish person. Gematria. It's like shibboleth. Say shibboleth. Remember in the, in the, in, in the book of Shoftim? Mm -hmm. They knew where they were from. They knew what area they were from, depending on how they said the word shibboleth. Yeah. Yes. So an Ephraimite will always say, well, I'm, I'm into the study of gematria. And the Jewish patient will say, what are you talking about? It's gematria. <laughs> in gematria 
Each Hebrew letter is assigned a numerical value. An interesting insight about gematria is if that two words have the same number, there is a, a divine connection. I'll say that again. In gematria, there is a number one principle. If two words add up to the same number, there is a connection. You understand, Vincent? If two Hebrew words, this doesn't apply in Chinese, this doesn't apply in Swahili, this doesn't apply in Arabic, only in the Lashon HaKodesh or the Hebrew tongue. If two words add up to the same numerical value, there is a divine connection to those two words. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. For example, let's go back to the dreidel. The letters and numbers on the dreidel, this, this interconnection, interrelation of concepts and words and ideas between the identical numerical value is spoken to us through the dreidel. What are the numbers on the dreidel? Reverend Smith could probably help us with this. Noon is, what is the numerical value for noon? 50. What is the numerical value for gimel? Three. Three. What is the numerical value for hay? Five. Five. What is the numerical value for shin? 300. 50 plus 3 plus 5 plus 300 is 358. Speak to us, O Dreidel. 300 and how much? 58. 358 is widely known in Hebrew to be the number of the serpent. 358 is the numerical value of the Hebrew word nachash, or serpent. The serpent, or the nachash, is symbolic of evil and rebellion. Adam and Chava were tempted by the serpent and eventually sinned. In Genesis 3.15, the messianic prophecy was given that he will bruise your heel, Mashiach, but the seed of the woman would break the head of the serpent. Benesha 3.15. From that time forward, the dragon has waged a vicious war against the seed of righteousness. The event surrounding the first Hanukkah was another attempt to destroy the lineage of Mashiach. Satan knew if he can destroy the Jewish people, the Jewish Messiah could not come to rescue the world. And the curse on Judah, Ezekiel 4.4, 4, could not be lifted. The enemy persecuted, killed, ridiculed, slaughtered, and mocked our ancestors. The Hebraic culture was invaded, Torah was forbidden, the temple was desecrated. Sound familiar? Today we face the same struggle. So in other words, the 358 is the word Satan. Whose job is it to send our lives spinning? I give it's given. Well, we're helping out here. Spinning out of control. S period, A period, ten. Do you think Yahweh wants your life spinning out of control? No. Because Yahweh's up here holding it all together. Right? He's up here. He's up here. And so even when we fall, who's holding it all together? Yeah. Even when we fall, who's holding it all together? Yeah. Yahweh. Yahweh. Yeshua. You with me, Matthew? Si, yeah. Senor. Now. <laughs> but when we add up 358, we get the Hebrew word nachash. Nachash. Or dragon. Serpent. It is the serpent who wants the... He doesn't care which of these letters is distinguished. Yahweh wants to make them what, Bruno? Indistinguishable. So you fly, you can even hear the spirit, can't you? When you spin the, the dreidel, can't you even hear the spirit? There, look. Wow. You don't know what letter is going to fall. You don't know what letter is going to come up. And so it is with all who are born in the Ruach. Even though our life spins out of control, today we face the same struggle with the same enemy. Yochanan 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The dragon wants you to mix the true faith with the culture of the Greco-Roman world. He wants us to assimilate into the nations and lose our saltiness. Hasatan, Satan wants us depressed, ineffective for the kingdom, bummed out, suicidal, confused. Dazed and confused. He will try to stop you from studying Torah, Haft Torah, and Bird Chadashah, which is our life and our hope. The serpent wants you to rebel against the congregation, against the rabbi, against your leadership, against your husband, against authority. The serpent wants you to rebel and fall like Adam Bechava because of unfounded jealousy of the silliness of the silliness of this world order. 
Why was Satan thrown out of heaven?